Good morning. It's Wednesday, January 13th, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, When the Killing is Done. Our scripture is Proverbs chapter 4, the words of David as recorded by his son Solomon. David says to his son, Don't do as the wicked do, and don't follow the path of evildoers. Don't even think about it. Don't go that way. Turn away and keep moving, for evil people can't sleep until they've done their evil deed for the day. They can't rest until they've caused someone to stumble. They eat the food of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, which shines even brighter until the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like total darkness. They have no idea what they're stumbling over. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. There's a good reason we have in Proverbs these wise words of King David to his son Solomon. It was Solomon's pen, but it was David's life experience of going down the rabbit hole of wickedness and violence. The once fresh-faced shepherd boy who became a king also chased the illusion of being invincible. David became convinced the press reports were right about him being wonderful, and in pride he slipped into the darkness. The words are recorded as a warning to his son Solomon, but they're David's testimony, gleaned wisdom from a life that went from zero to hero and back. The man who slipped off the hero pedestal, admired by the people of Israel for being a righteous man, became an adulterer, a conspirator in murder, and the corrupting influence that destroyed even his own family. The sins of a powerful leader who falls into dishonor are in no way a private matter. David's warning to Solomon is painted in the strongest images of unimaginable pain from those whose hearts are unguarded, and the perils they face by disregarding truth in favor of their fantasy grandeur. The trappings of power tend to shield one from the reality of human frailty. We are here for three score and ten. We are not God." Leaders tend to overestimate their successes and deny their failures even exist. It's rare to find even a teaspoon of humility in the spotlighted halls of world leaders. It's a matter of pride and power, and left unchecked, pride leads to destruction. We've seen that work out in the streets of Washington of late. It leads to insurrection, mob justice, and death. That it was done largely by misguided loyalists does not keep the hands of the leader clean. King David was in Jerusalem when the plot was unleashed to kill Uriah the Hittite on the battlefield in Ammon. But distance did not change the king's culpability in murder. It was David's order. David's plan was a cover-up after his adultery with Uriah's wife Bathsheba. He was trying to protect his squeaky clean image as a good guy with a plot to kill an innocent man. Evil and self-aggrandizement is a dark rabbit hole. However dark it must be at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue these days, I'm still more amazed at how the darkness of the leader has shrouded whatever common sense the leader's followers may have once possessed. To riot, destroy, and even cause death as a so-called righteous response to a fraudulent election, of which proof is somehow still lacking, is disconcerting at least. It reminds me of the crowd outside Pilate's house yelling, Crucify! and raising fists and violence and murder, while the only evidence against Jesus was his healing and teaching to love one another. It just doesn't make any sense. 
I would say that I have no solution to offer for what ails us, but deep within, I do recognize there is one who does have a solution. He knows firsthand what mobs do and why. For you today, it takes courage and more than a little risk to stand up to bullying and murdering with bullets or words. If you need a reminder like Solomon needed David's testimony, remember, vultures are only waiting for when the killing is done. David said it best, son, don't even think about it. Don't go that way. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.